how to deal with someone who says that's so gay. Outsmart them. This party is, like, so gay. Totally. Excuse me, but did you ladies know the word gay used to mean happy or excited? Then it became a word used to describe gay people. Then somehow it came to mean dumb or stupid, which is how you just used it, which is not very nice. Ew, that guy is on the football team and super smart, and he totally hates us now. Totally. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Learn more at thinkbeforeyouspeak.com. Brought to you by Glisten and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a successful motivational speaker and trusted life coach, Nancy knows how you can live the life you want regardless of the challenges you face. Although she's legally blind, Nancy's mission is to inspire others to overcome obstacles and live life full out. Call in at 800-333-0001 to ask Nancy for advice on topics such as relationships, finances, business, health, and more. Just call 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. I hope that you're all having a great day. I, I'm so excited about today's show because we're going to be talking about leadership but not leadership how you would normally think about it just in sense of like a career or or responsibility or you know dictating or you know delegating tasks it's not just about that leadership is really when you take the lead in your life when you get to those crossroads and you need to make a decision you got to have confidence you got to do your research you know really analyze which direction is going to be the most beneficial for you and to support others in your life. Leaders are are very divine people because they're methodical in the way they think. They don't just step out there and do things haphazardly. Now, some do. Some notorious leaders are out there and they do go on instinct. But today's show is dedicated to being the leader in our life taking control back in our life. And when you live full out in life, it's meant to give you that place where you can exhale, where you can be free. That's what it means to live full out. So over the course of today's show, I want you to feel free to call in. If you have questions and you need advice, again, the number is 800-333-0001, 800-333-0001. Because I know in my life, there's no way I could have got to where I am today in life without reaching out my hand from time to time and asking for help. But I did learn over time, especially with losing my vision and going legally blind, that I do have those leaderships and skills inside me. You know, we don't always know that when we have moments in our life where we feel small, where we feel scared or feel or fearful, you know, we don't feel like a leader. But I want you to know that that leader is inside you. And over the course of today's show, let's bring that person out. Let's let them step out on your own stage of life, have their voice and inspire others. We're going to go to the phone lines now. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, welcome to the show. So tell us, uh, what's going on? Um, I just graduated from college, and I'm unsure of what to do now. Should I follow my passion, uh, which is working with sex trafficking victims, but not end up making a lot of money or follow the social norms and find a job making decent money, which is like pharmacy. You know what? I, I've been there in my life. That That's a really interesting place to be, right? Do you go where yeah. maybe your parents who have paid for your education or not? One is I want to ask you is our past will always give us some highlight into the future, meaning that when you consider the things that you've really enjoyed in your life, um, have they all cost money? Have they all been related to money? Um, yeah, it has. Okay, okay. So just think about that because um, this passionate career that you might have, it might fulfill you a lot internally but it might not fulfill all the needs you have for your life. You know, somebody might say, always follow your heart. You can never go wrong. Well, I think you can blend following your passion with also doing something that's going to give you perhaps the financial backing that you might need and also maybe be in alignment with your parents 
dreams for you. Um, you just have to figure out how you can blend those two worlds together. Because if you know that your past um, passions, actions, favorite moments were all from a place of that involved money or being able to afford to do something or having the luxury to do something, then you don't want to restrict yourself from doing that. You still want to have that ability. So you just need to find a career where you can take the passion that you have in your heart for helping others and also be able to make the financials that you want. What I would honestly consider is is connecting yourself with a career coach. There's lots of them out there. Somebody who will help you decide what various options you will have. And then from there, shadow people in those positions. Find somebody who has a title or a job that you think would be great and find out how did they get there? What experience did they need to have to be in that position? Shadow them for a day, go to work with them or spend half a day with them and see if it, that is what you want to do. How does that sound? That's actually, that's actually really good advice. I didn't. I never really um, considered like combining or combining like the two different things together, and like actually getting a coach um, to really guide me. Because I think a lot of times I feel lost because um, I don't have the guidance, or like I'm like I know my goal, but I don't know the step by step on how to get there. And so I think definitely um, getting a coach would help a lot. Absolutely. And, and, and that's what they do. That's what they specialize in. And there's jobs that you put because we always go with what we know, right? But you're, right. An, but you're an original. There's only one you. So go ahead and go out there and make your own waves, make your own position. Maybe you have an entrepreneurial side to you that you don't know about. Who knows? So I would, I would just creatively step into your future with your, with your arms wide open and, and seek every opportunity that comes your way. And and then get that coach so they can help you um, guide you along. Yeah. Okay. Like, I think also just coming out of your comfort zone, Gary. But definitely, yeah. Thank you so much for your advice. Well, I believe in you very much. And the thing is, is those butterflies in your stomach, that scary feeling, that's what life's about. Life would be boring if we didn't have that feeling, right? right. So take it was- that. So take that nervous energy and go out there and just find your way. And when I say find your way, that's what life's about. You know, we don't know who we're going to be, what we want in the early stages of our life. But you will learn that as you journey through life. So don't be afraid to embrace the unknown. Let Harness that nervous energy and, and just go for it. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great rest of your Saturday. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So she brings up a great question. And honestly, everybody who is listening today, we all feel lost at times. We all feel uncertain about our future. So that's just being human. So hang in there. We're going to continue to journey through this living full out hour together and inspire each other. We're going to go back to the lines very briefly here. Hello. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, welcome. What what's Thank going you. on today? Um, I had a question actually. Uh huh. Um, so I heard there's a statistic going on around there that says children of divorced parents are bound to get divorced as well. And I was wondering how I can beat those odds without compromising myself to someone who probably wouldn't be the best for me. You know what? Statistics are great, and they definitely have their place in the world. But you are, I bet you are a very loving person, right? I, I think so. Okay. And, and, and do you feel like you're a good partner to those that you've dated in the past? I haven't really dated before, actually. You haven't dated. Well, even more exciting Okay, here's the thing. Don't let statistics, don't let your parents um, divorce, don't let that be a predictor for your future. You know, when I think about my family, my mom and dad got divorced, but that's the only divorce in my family that I know of. 
And the thing is, it doesn't mean that every marriage turns into a divorce. You know, sure, some marriages are more happy than others, but, you know, believe in yourself, believe what you have to give to others. And here's what I want you to do since you haven't really dated much, which I think is fantastic. I want you to go ahead and do some research, read some books on dating, on what men look for in relationships. And at the same time, I want you to read books for yourself in terms of, you know, what would you need in a partner? What would you like in a partner? Now, somebody might say, oh my gosh, who has time to read all these books? I'm telling you, the more you read, the more you learn about yourself and what you want, it's going to make that date that you have with somebody. It's going to make that relationship that you have with somebody even that much more richer, that much more authentic. And so I love that you're in this very pure state where you have the ability to choose other than the statistics and your parents past. You're, you're, you have so much opportunity ahead of you. Do you see that? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I mean, incredibly, you're going to be an awesome partner for somebody because, you know, you've heard of quote, quote, baggage, right? You don't have that. Yeah. You're kind of a clean slate. So just go into your next dating experience, your first dating experience or your next relationship. Go into that with love in your heart. Be as giving as you can be. And when I say it can be, because if you do need something in that relationship, don't be afraid to ask. I think a lot of times people forget to ask for what they want in a relationship. And it's kind of a give and take. How does that sound? That sounds awesome. Good. Well, do me a favor. Call us back at some point. Let us know how it's going. But I'm excited for you, honestly. I, I just think you're going to have a great adventure. But again, study up. Learn what you want in a relationship. And also find out what, what, what guys are looking for. Okay? Great. I All right. That. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Well, what great calls today. Honestly, both ladies have completely different situations, but they're taking charge of their life. They're becoming the leaders in their life, and that's what Living Full Out is about. When we come back, we're going to have a very special guest. I mean, I, I don't even want to spoil it for you because she's such a sweetheart, but yet has gone through so much torture in her life. So we'll be right back with Angelica Hernandez. Have a great rest of your moments here. Think about what we talked about. Think about the leader being the leader in your life. Think about what it is that you want out of your life because that's what living full out's about. It's about picturing our life, what we want, taking action steps to get it. We'll be right back. Isn't this dinner party wonderful? Jeanette and Bill did so much planning, and the house looks great. Well, you know, it was almost canceled. Did you hear that Bill was really sick with the flu two weeks ago? No, I had no idea. I've been so busy at work. But my co-worker's toddler was in the hospital with flu, too. Is Bill okay? It was pretty serious and aggravated his asthma. Bill got sick quickly with a high fever. Fortunately, Jeanette got him to the doctor right away. The doctor said it was flu and prescribed a medication that helped him get back on his feet. I didn't know flu was so serious until I heard Bill say he felt like he'd been hit by a truck. He missed a big meeting at work. Well, thank goodness Jeanette had gotten her flu shot. Because, you know, she's expecting... <gasps> what? <laughs> oh, man. I guess that was another thing you guys didn't know either. A message from the Department of Health and Human Services. Hi. I can't come to the phone right now because I'm abusing my children. Not just verbally, but physically. I'll get back to you. If only child abuse was this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call Child Help at 1-800-4-A-CHILD or visit childhelp.org. We've helped millions of people help millions of children. All calls are anonymous and confidential. So call 1-800-4-A-CHILD or visit childhelp.org. Child Help. Trust your instincts. Brought to you by Child Help and the Ad Council.
driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRacks.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Today, you hit the snooze bar. You checked your email. You checked your fantasy football team. You rejected an insulting trade offer. You ate your lunch. You did all the things that one normally does the day before a 175-mile-per-hour hurricane blows through your city, leaving it in a state of ruin. You never know when the day before is the day before. Prepare for tomorrow at ready.gov slash today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ed Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. A professional motivational speaker, Nancy can help you overcome obstacles and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out show. We are having a very inspirational show here. Honestly, I'm so excited about our next guest. I, I, I just have to jump into it because today we're talking about being leaders in our life. And this guest is is such a perfect example of somebody who took charge of her life, who led her life into a direction from being really tortured, molested from age three to 12 by multiple predators, but today is very happy and, and, and just basking in all that life has to offer. And so she's a perfect example of what it means to not only lead yourself in a direction of inspiration and motivation, but, but a true example of living her life full out. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Angelica Hernandez. Welcome. I appreciate that. And you know I'm such a fan of yours. I can only say it countless times in one day, but you are you are amazing. And I just want Thank to start you. off by talking about that because what we're going to talk about is very sensitive and it's very personal to you. And And I thank you, first of all, for being courageous to come on the show today and, and share with us about your past. Well, I think it's important for us to share each other's stories because I think uh, it, it, it just shows that everyone has a, a, a different strength or strength in them despite their circumstances. And I, I think the more we're willing to share and take that risk, uh, the more people were able to, to help. And uh, that can happen very uh, very casually or can happen with a great impact. And Absolutely. whichever way it comes, I'm in. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just going to say, can you share with our audience a little bit about your lifestyle growing up? Yeah, well, I was uh, I was raised by a single mother. Um, she had five children. I was the last of the of the children, and I was the only girl. And because of her circumstances, uh, having been an immigrant from Mexico and um, and poor, um, we moved around a lot. And in moving around a lot, there was a lot of stress in the family. Clearly, my mother was doing this by herself. Uh, we also got uh, government funding and, and welfare. And she was under a lot of stress just to survive, uh, have a roof over her head, have food, and all that. And so I don't think that she had uh, an awareness of how to, uh, in this case, protect me. And that came out just because uh, I was accessible to so many people because she didn't have that in her consciousness that something bad can happen to me. And so because of that, um, I was put in very precarious situations. I was left in the care of people that were um, predatory. And uh, one of those persons was one of my brothers. And my mother would go, um, you know, wherever she went, uh, mostly to church, praying to God for some uh, some help. Um, then he was my first perpetrator, and that started off very... Um, kind of uh, not aggressively. It was started off with bathing, and he would molest me there. And then it wasn't until I was age five that he actually raped me. And um, he was my first perpetrator. So from then on, and the one thing that he said to me, which is so haunting, is that he said he was going to teach me what girls need to know how to do. Mm. And that was the precursor to the rape. 
and <clears throat> which is such a powerful statement, and it really has, you know, been with me uh, ever since. And so the next person that came around who was, you know, attentive to my mother, you know, in the case of, um, you know, giving us a discounted rent or um, offering to babysit or I'll watch the kids while you go out and go, you know, get the food stamps or whatever it was, they kind of set, uh, my brother set the tone for what I was uh, about to walk into. And what ended up happening is because I was so trained to be receptive to, in this case, men's distress, um, I picked up on all those cues, and I just knew what to do. And, and that's the tragedy. The tragedy that it, is that it happened so many times that I just knew what to expect. Well, and, and you be- had, read to 12, you had like five different men that molested you. Is that right? Yeah. So, so it started, I have one brother, that mm-hmm. he, he, he was the first one, and then there was a cousin, a male cousin, and mm-hmm. then the, these two men who were um, who my mother uh, rented an apartment from, we lived above a shoe store where he was the shoe store guy. And um, this was in Chicago. He was a Cuban man. And it was like a little uh, kind of an uh, industrial area. Mm-hmm. And there was another Cuban friend of his who owned, a, ironically, a kid's dress shop. And mm-hmm. I don't know if they, each of them knew about each other, but the shoe store man started to molest me. And I really, in truth, kind of felt indebted to him because I felt like he was, for some reason, I knew that we were getting helped out by living Mm -hmm. there. He would take us out to dinner. And I just felt this bizarre indebtedness to him, like I owed him, and that I was somehow the sacrifice to having a discounted rent, having gone to a, you know, in this case, uh, I believe that a nice restaurant was Sizzler something like that, Mm -hmm. because I was used to eating McDonald's or Taco Bell or expensive food, and so I I felt like I was lucky, and that this was the cost of that. You know, and and, and Helica, you bring up such a great great, um, topic right there, because in life, whether somebody's being molested, whether it's domestic violence, whether it's you know, just being abused in any way. You know, when when somebody feels indebted to somebody else, that's that's when they they feel that they need to play small or they they can't find their voice. And you know, here you were at such a young age trying to do what you thought you needed to do or or what was you know told of you. You know, there was one gentleman though that was a stranger to you, and and yeah. probably this was the most tragic of all. Correct. Yeah, the, the most violent and the most, um, which is interesting because most of my perpetrators were someone that my fam- my mother knew, my family knew. And this situation, uh, I was seven years old, again, living on the same block in Chicago. Um, there used to be a Toys R Us store. And for, again, some reason, because my mother wasn't home, I was kind of wandering the streets. <clears throat> and I had uh, gone to Toys R Us to get some gumballs from the dispenser. And uh, I had these little slugs to, like, dime size, but they're plastic. So I kind of knew I was getting away with something, but there I was putting my little dime size slugs in the gumball machine, and I noticed a man's like foot while I was kneeled down. And I thought, uh-oh, the to- Toys R Us employee is going to tell me, hey, you can't do that. But it wasn't a Toys R Us employee. In fact, it was a, a teenager, and he had said, started a conversation with me about gumballs. Oh, you really like gum, don't you? Now, I'm seven years old, so I can't imagine the conversation that took place, but Mm -hmm. he offered to to walk me home. And I lived just down the street, so I told him I lived right across the street from the movie theater, above the shoe store, and he's like, oh, I'll give you a you know, I'll walk you. I said, great. So there we are walking, which I can't imagine the conversation during the walk. And as we cut through an alley, because he had taken another uh, another route, uh, I can literally see the door to my apartment from where I was walking. And uh, at the last minute before I approached uh, the street, he pushed me down a service entrance, down the stairs, and and he he raped me. Um, He sodomized me. I was seven. Mm -hmm. When I finally got up off the floor and ran up the stairs, I can remember pulling up my little tough skin shorts as I'm running across the street. And Mm -hmm. I get to my my door, and of course, I'm... I had my own key, so I remember, like, wiping my eyes, kind of sucking in my snot, and just, okay, okay, stop crying. Mm -hmm. Just 
get up the stairs, get in the house. Like I, I was already anticipating that I needed to take care of my quiet, clean up, and move on. That was my that was my you know my frame. So I go well, upstairs. I, I... Well, I hope I hope that I want to take this moment because I hope that you can feel the love from all of our community to you right now because you know never in my wildest dreams would I want that for any child and I'm so sorry that you went through that and I'm and I'm just curious because I'm sure our listeners are as well having gone through all this and with your mother being absent did you have a lot of anger towards her going into your teenage years for being Absolutely. so absent. Yeah, because that's when I started to confront her, when I started to realize um, that she she missed these opportunities. And so when she would try to say, oh, you need to be home, or, you know, you know you can't spend the night, I really was, like, kind of laughing at her, like, you missed your opportunity. And I was mm. very sarcastic and very angry about it. Um, so I really pretty much did what I wanted to do, but I also had a sense of safety more so mm. than... than uh, than I did, obviously, as a child. So I felt really competent and really self-sufficient. And I thought that her, you know, uh, attempts to parent or her attempt to protect me was futile. Because well, and you, and you had mentioned to me in one of our previous conversations that really you had to step up and become a leader in your life. You had to kind of put your childhood aside because really you, it had been escalated into your adulthood so quickly. Absolutely. And part, part of that responsibility was that I had a mother who, 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 who struggled and, and kind of rendered herself helpless. And so I just took charge. And, you know, I did well academically. I had a very, you know, various personality. But that wasn't always accepted by other people because, again, I was a girl. I was supposed to be quiet, not loud, not strong. And I had all these. So there was a battle to, mm -hmm. to assert myself. Well, and I'm just curious, I mean, we're going to go into a commercial break here and come back, but, you know, what do you think, what, what, what survival skill do you think it was that helped you to get through that time in your life, through all that molestation and torture? Resilience, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Resilience. And, and I had, you know, a deep hope uh, that it was going to end and things were going to get better. That was, you know, that's the name of my business, Theory of Hope, um, and it's just that it's, it's, something's got to give. Mm -hmm. I love that. Never lose hope. I mean, that's a message for everybody listening today. Wherever you are in your life, whatever hardship you're going through, never lose hope. Um, and, you know, we're going to be right back after this commercial break. I, I'm, I'm captivated by your story, and I, there's more to come. So stay, stay with us, and we'll be right back. How's the fish in this morning? Shh! You'll scare the fish. Oh, nonsense. Fishies love the safety pirate. Now tell me, I see you're wearing your life jacket, and that's mighty smart of you. But have you taken a boat and safety course? I have. Now could you please leave? Hmm. So you know to stay alert by not mixing alcohol and boating, don't you? I do. But I bet you didn't know it's dangerous to speed on the water. Now did you, Turbo? Actually, I knew that. Well, smarty pants. You seem to know it all, don't you? Yep. Maybe even more than a safety pirate. Ah, watch your mouth, sailor! When you're out on the water this year, make sure you're being safe. Learn the boating rules and watch out for other boaters. And remember to boat smart. Boat safe. A message from the National Safe Boating Council. I want to change some things. I want the moms where I live to have childcare they can trust. I want to make sure my little brother and his friends have a safe place to play. I want to help more kids graduate from high school. Help more hardworking families learn how to budget and save. I want more of my neighbors to have access to health care. Want to make a difference? There are so many ways you can. Help create opportunities for everyone in your community. I want to change what I see around here. 
United Way is creating real, lasting change where you live by focusing on the building blocks of a better life, education, income, and health. I mean, I just want to see more smiles on my sidewalks. Reach out a hand to one and influence the condition of all. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. For more, visit United Way at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a trusted life coach, Nancy will help you overcome setbacks and embrace all life has to offer. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out show. I am Nancy Soleri, and today we are talking about being the leader in our life, you know, when life gives us those moments that are unbearable, challenging, obstacles, we could go on and on with different words to describe it, traumatic, we have the ability to lead ourselves out of those situations to a brighter place. It's not easy. It takes years sometimes to get to that place, but we can get there. And our guest today, Dr. Angelica Hernandez, she's a perfect example of having just done that. Um, I want to welcome her back to the show. Angelica? Yes. Hello. Hi. So, again, thank you for courageously sharing with us in the last segment, you know, about your story and, and all the different molestation you went through and being raped and, and all of that. And, I, and I, again, I know that's sensitive to talk about today. So thank you for trusting us with your story. Um, now, after age 12, moving into your 20s, you know, that's when you really started to lead your life into a different direction. And I know one of your pivotal points was age 14. Can you share with us about that? Yes. You know, age 14 was pivotal because it was the first time I'd ever heard the word incest. I was watching a movie while I was babysitting, and it was something about Amelia with Ted Danson. And um, at that point, uh, it's when I started to come to terms with what had happened. And uh, at that point, I decided this is all real, this makes sense, this makes sense to why I'm so scared, this makes sense, and I really started to advocate myself, and I decided, I told my mother that um, I was going to press charges against my brother, and she was mortified. She couldn't believe that I would somehow let the secret out, and she was more afraid for the family's response and reaction and my brother's response than she was for me, Hmm. and that, that, that's, that's, that's heartbreaking. Um, anyway, I lived in California at the time. I flew to Chicago with this intention of charging him with child molestation. And anyway, so I go to the police office, you know, Chicago Police Department, and I say I'd like to report child abuse. And the guy says, uh, on who? What? I said, me. And the guy kind of laughs, which just like, bizarre laugh out and says, Mary, this one's yours. Like, in other words, Hmm. he doesn't deal with that. So from that moment on, I just felt this real, um, like I was in for a battle. Like I had to not only not be silent, but now I had to be even louder and more assertive and really press my point. Well, it turns out statute of limitations is seven years. And at that point, if I were going to have pressed charges, I would have had been 12 years old. So here I am two years late, two years too late. And uh, and that, you can imagine, was, was heartbreaking. But yeah. that put me on the path to advocate for myself and to advocate for others, to share my story. And trust me, I couldn't have this conversation with you today um, that I'm having, you know, 20 years ago. Because I couldn't even utter the words. I couldn't even say my brother's name without getting choked up and just shaking and being in such distress and trauma that uh, I couldn't get a word out. So it's been a lot of work. It's been work on understanding that I wasn't part. I wasn't the blame. I wasn't part of the problem. I didn't have to carry that burden. I talked about with my mother and feeling indebted. I didn't owe anyone anything. Mm-hmm. And that you was know, I you know, I, I love, I love that you stood up and wanted to be an advocate for yourself. And again, everybody listening today, that's a a treasured statement that we could all take with us. Whatever situation we're in, you have to be an advocate for yourself. You have to be that leader in your life. And, you know, one of the things I think was so inspirational about your story is when you had that event where you really 
said goodbye to it all. Can you share with us about that? Yeah, well, um, in 2003, I, I was, you know, I continue to, to be haunted by these images and these memories. And I said, you know, there's something I've got to do to just kind of put these out of my mind. I need to lay them to rest. And I came up with this idea of creating a pine box, like a, like a coffin, and putting images that reminded me of those specific perpetrators and specific situations in the box and for that person creating like an FBI profile poster. And so I wrote down all the images, I mean, all the um, statistics that I remembered, like if they were Latino or they were black or if they were white, what their age was, what their height was. And then I wrote on the bottom of each poster a brief. So it was just just in the same format as the FBI, where you write the description of what happened, the MO. And uh, at the base of each of these posters, there were eight of them, was a pine box. And in one of the boxes was gumballs, just these big, you know, brown, colorful, beautiful gumballs. But for everybody, you know, most people think of gumballs and say, oh, childhood, innocence, blowing bubbles. Oh, I love that. But for me, every single time I saw a bubble come, uh, in this in this format, it reminded me of being at Toys R Us and being, you know, taken away and being raped. And right. so I was like, you know what? I, I have to I have to reclaim this. I have to somehow, you know, take the pollution out of these gumballs and, and and make them innocent again. And so mm. that's what I did. And I had a show, and I, I continue to have shows uh, whenever the opportunity arises to put this out there to show that things that might be benign to one person have a history or trigger to others. And let's open up the conversation. Because I'm ready to talk. I want to talk. I want to share this. I will answer any question you have for me because I've done the work. And well, I and, I, and I'm so glad that you are talking because for all of those listening today who have encountered abuse or, or are being molested or have just been raped or any of that, it's... It, it, it's, it's unimaginable how you get over that. Um, and so I understand that you even today you have triggers, right? Even even Absolutely. though you've done all the work, even today yeah. you hear someone's voice and they remind you of those men. Yeah, and, and you, can hear, you can have a smell. You can have just something. It's like a deja vu in your body, you know, it's like in, in flight, flight or freeze. And that mm-hmm. is a response to trauma. And your body remembers, and you know. And so the, 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 the trick is, is how to work through that and walk through that because we can't prevent triggers. We can't prevent the world from being the world and someone looking like someone else. And But what we can do is we can be compassionate towards ourselves and say, wow, you just got triggered. That man's voice reminded you of fill in the blank. And well, um, so it hasn't gone away, but, but in truth, it has lessened. I today feel hope and light and peace, and I don't feel like I'm trapped in fear. Well, for somebody today who feels lost, feels hopeless, feels as though they can't let go of those triggers, of those past experiences, what what advice do you have for them in terms of how to begin that process? I mean, sometimes people can't even see being their own advocate because they're so scared, they're so paralyzed. You know, we're so lucky today to have the, the, the computer access Internet. I would say go investigate um, places that have uh, resources, whether it's stories, whether it's therapy or it's discounted therapy, or find a way to let it out, whether it's through writing, through photography, and reach out to someone, someone you trust, someone you know is going to walk with you, you know, through the process. And I, it's, it's like a promise that things will get better if you just take that risk. Mm-hmm. And that risk is going to set you free. There's no question about it. Well, and I have another burning question for you because I believe that you have you have advice that you can give on both sides. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious, if a child is listening today or someone who has been molested or raped, or if you are a relative or a friend and you know that person has been molested or raped, how can either party help each other to get to a better place, to get out of that that moment of crisis? Well, if you're an adult, you have a, you know, a, a human responsibility to take care of children, to protect them. So what I would do is I would call RAIN. It's the, uh, it's the Child Abuse Hotline. 
and get information, get resources. And I would definitely, you know, call the police if you have any suspicion. You call child services, wherever, whatever state you live in, and just say, you can be anonymous and just say, I have this sinking feeling. I've witnessed this, this, and this, and I think this child's in danger. Or, you know, I know this for a fact. Please do the investigation, but do not remain silent. You are doing a disservice to children by pretending that it's a family issue, that it's none of your business. It is our business to take care of our children. There's no and, question about that. And what if you're the person being preyed upon? If you are the person that's being preyed upon, you have teachers. If you're a child, you have a principal. You have a crossing guard. You have someone that you can tell, I need to talk to you. And you can tell them they are obligated to take care of you. And it's someone you trust. Mm -hmm. Find that teacher. Find that coach. You know, um... Uh, there's so many things I want to ask you. I know we're at the end of our time here, but, you know, what motivational thought of hope do you want to share with our listeners at the end of today? Kind of just, if you can even bring all that you've been through into one final thought, what would that be? I would say uh, to, to continue to have hope. And I, the, the definition that I found for that was to wish for something with expectation of its fulfillment. So imagine it happening create that space for it and there will be some relief mm. you know Angelica you make me want to cry but not sad <laughs> tears you make me want to cry happy tears yeah I feel good I'm yeah. very grateful thank you you're an amazing amazing woman and I'm so glad that you're walking this earth to help others and and go ahead and tell people the name of your foundation again uh, Theory of Hope it's my website I offer coaching I offer uh, speaking to students privately, to families, uh, just to really get an understanding of what our part is in protecting our children and how best yeah. to approach that. Yeah, you know, I don't open that up to every guest, but you are somebody special in this world. And so this is such a sensitive topic that if somebody does need that guidance, they want to become a leader in their life, contact you because, boy, you've really changed my life and I appreciate you so much. So... Thank you for being a part of our show. I'm sending you lots of love, and uh, thank you again for sharing your story with us. Well, thank you for doing the work you do to give me the opportunity. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What a powerful interview. And like I said, I have tears in my eyes, but they're happy tears because hopefully somebody listening today will be moved to make a difference in someone's life, or hopefully if you're being preyed upon, you will be able to get that help. We'll be right back after this next break. Hey, Dad. Yeah. You remember that board game we went to a couple years ago? Sure. And how you didn't have enough cash for two hot dogs, so you walked with me on your shoulders until we found an ATM? And then when we got back to our seats, we never saw the hot dog guy again. Well, I don't remember all that. Yeah, that was an awesome game. You never know which moments will be the ones they remember forever. So take time to be a dad today. Learn more at one eight seven seven for dad 411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Medical mistakes claim tens of thousands of lives every year. The healthcare community is working on it, but you can help. When you communicate with your doctor, when you ask more questions, you reduce your risk of suffering a medical mistake. Doctors can't answer if you don't ask. Help reduce your risk. Questions are the answer. Learn the 10 questions you must ask. Visit www.ahrq.gov. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and the Ad Council. I'm getting a catcher's mitt. I'm getting ice skates. I'm getting a devastating flood. Adults are generous. We're even giving kids global warming. But we can still reduce greenhouse gas pollution. Go to fightglobalwarming.com. Brought to you by Environmental Defense, the Robertson Foundation, and the Ad Council. There are many sounds in your daily life. 
Ones that make you smile. <laughs> ones that help you relax. And there are some sounds that can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts. Now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you critical information about emergencies in your area. With updates from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know wherever you are. Learn more at ready.gov slash alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is President Barack Obama. In the story of America, the greatest chapters are moments of challenge. When we see people serving their country and one another. Volunteers who step forward into hospital corridors and church basements, along levees and fire lines. And the next chapter is yours to help write. Sign up to volunteer at usaservice.org. That's usaservice.org. Let's renew America together. A message from Renew America Together, brought to you by the Ad Council. Living Full Out is about being the leader in your life. It's about being the advocate to move yourself forward. If you're going through any sort of crisis or trauma, know that hope is around the corner. You can lead yourself to a better place, a better life. Living Full Out is about embracing the journey, brushing yourself off sometimes when you get dusty, but the time is now to live full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a certified life coach, Nancy can help you to overcome challenges and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out show. I am just... um I can't even tell you how inspired I am by Dr. Hernandez. Her her interview was outstanding. And, you know, she found her voice, and I want you to find yours. Know that whatever situation you've gone through, you're going through, and even the future that may be coming, when we feel under threats, when we are uh, restricted by fear, when we're having moments of anxiety, we do feel cut off at the throat. We feel like we, we're all shook up like a soda can and, and we're going to explode, but we don't know where to put all that tension. We don't know where to put all those, those feelings. And, and that's what therapy, that's what coaching, that's what reaching your hand out, asking for help is all about. You don't live full out alone. You live full out with others. You build that community that's going to support you to make sure that your dreams, your goals come true. And I know in my own life, being legally blind, I've needed that support. You know, I'm surrounded today by my fabulous radio team here. And uh, I'm telling you, there's no way this show could even go on um, without that support. You know, For me, going legally blind has needed for me to open up, to find my voice, to ask for help when needed. So as we go back to the phone lines here in a bit, I just, I want everybody to know that it's okay to call in. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to to reach out your hand and, and need something. Don't feel like that's defeat. Don't feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's being a burden to anybody. It's actually the opposite of that. When you reach out your hand, when you're vulnerable, when you're open, you, you, Open yourself up to more authentic, more intimate relationships. I know for me, people who are in my life, I mean, they they literally walk around their house with their eyes shut. They want to understand what it's like to be blind. Or they quickly understand when they're out with me what it's like to be blind as I bump into things or hit, you know, hit my head on things and whatnot. So it's just, you know, we're in this together. So, you know, I, I find that as much as we need to be sensitive and serious about those hard times in our life, you also have to kind of have a little humor to it. You know, today I was walking and I was holding my cell phone, my iPhone, listening to music, and I bumped into a pole and my cell phone fell out of my hand and it fell flat on the cement. I was just hoping as I bent down that it was going to work. And it did. It's completely scratched. And at that moment, I was like, oh, gosh, I just dropped my phone. And there was a moment of frustration. And then I thought to myself, you know what, Nancy? At least you didn't hit your head and crack your head open, which I've done. At least you didn't uh, fall and twist your ankle. At least my dog that I was walking didn't get hit by a car. You know, there's a lot worse things that could happen in one's life than dropping their iPhone. 
And I share that story with you today because being a leader in our life means that we can quantify things. We can put things in buckets. What's really important? What's a nuisance or what's a distraction? What's an in- inconvenience? And, and, and just put those things that, that may torture us in a moment, like dropping a cell phone, and put them aside because they don't matter. On the big scale of life, listening to Angelica's story, how she was raped and molested, that matters. You know, the, our callers in the first segment, figuring out life direction, which way you're going to go because school's financially expensive or we have our time, we want to invest our time the right way, that matters. And, and so it's really important that as you consider living your life full out, as you consider going for your dreams and goals, know that there are going to be moments where you're going to fall. You're going to drop a cell phone. And there's going to be times where people prey on us. You know, there's going to be times where people take advantage of us where people do wrong by us. Maybe they have an affair or or whatever that may be in terms of a relationship. Just like our caller earlier today who statistically was fearful about after her parents getting divorced, will she end up in divorce? You know, put all that aside. Don't let your past dictate your future. Lead yourself in the direction that you want to go. We're going to go back to the phone lines. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, oh, thank welcome. you. Hi, welcome. So, what's going on? So, um, I just uh, wanted to call in, and I um, am the head of a global health club on my college's campus, and um, it's just always been a struggle for me to delegate, and that's something that I'm really working on getting better in, just as a way to you know help those around me to really learn to do their jobs, but also for myself so that I don't get overwhelmed. So you, so you, do you have a hard time delegating because you feel that you could do certain tasks faster or better? Or what do you, what do you think the stumbling block is in you delegating? Well, I think it's especially difficult. I think my fear is that things won't get done. Um, and... I think it's especially difficult in a university situation simply because, you know, people aren't getting paid for their time. They're choosing to do this because it's something that hopefully interests them. Hopefully it's not just a resume builder. But um, I think in that sense, you know, people don't necessarily do the tasks that are assigned to them. And so then, you know, how do you learn to trust that in the next instance they will? Mm-hmm. Well, and I can appreciate that. Um, I just have a question for you. Have you ever mm-hmm. ran late trying to meet a friend somewhere? Yes, not frequently because I'm very <laughs> nervous about it. I don't want right. to be late, but, um, you know, and I always call ahead, but you know, right. once in a while. Sure, yeah. Right. Right. And, and I'd love that you justify all the times that you haven't been late, but stick with me on this. The reason why I asked this question is when you were late, you felt bad, right? Mm-hmm. And you were like, I'm never going to be late again. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or have you ever done something, just a mistake and, and felt like, oh gosh, I can't believe I did that. Kind of like a funny moment. Yeah, of course. Okay. The reason why I mention this is I love that you have such a great business side to you and clearly unlimited potential for you. You will be uber goober successful. You're going to be above the moon successful, no doubt. However, when you allow people to have a mistake, when you allow people to have that moment, it's a learning for them. So see, if you always try to control or not delegate or make sure that everything runs smoothly, it's a missing moment for that person. It's it's really important Mm -hmm. that in life, it's not about how much we make. It's not about the accolades, the awards, anything like that. It's about the growing and learning together. And you have this great mentorship um, side of you that I think can be further explored. And so... You have to be willing to give work away. You have to be willing to trust people. And if they make a mistake, if they run late or if they mess up or if something doesn't get done, let them have that moment for themselves of figuring out, I don't want to do that again. 
Do you get that? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that that's where the leadership comes in because now you're building a team of people who don't want to let you down. They don't want to let the project down. And it, and it just, it just grows into this really intimate structure that by trying to protect, uh, the elements of what's going on and not delegating, you don't allow for that opportunity. Is that something you can try? Yes, absolutely. Definitely now, work on the, it. now, the caveat to that, though, is if somebody is constantly not bringing it, if they're not holding up their end of the bargain, part of being a leader is making those tough decisions. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's letting people go. Sometimes it's assessing maybe they're in the wrong position. Maybe you just need to move them around. I mean, it's really important to invest in your team, invest in is somebody happy doing what they're doing? Would they be better served to move to a different project, a different task? So Mm -hmm. that's just part of being a leader is those tough decisions. But I believe in you. I know you can do this. I I, I want you to be on my team. You're so good. Okay. Thank you so so much. Absolutely. So keep us posted, but um, otherwise, yeah, just just give those people a shot. Let let them let them make a few mistakes. Let them let them learn. And then again, I really believe your unit, your project will will grow and be better off. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You got it. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. So she brings up a really great question. Actually, that's our first true business question today about leadership. But you know, the thing is, is being a leader in your life, being a leader in your organization, it you always want to be humble. You always want to find a way to to be sympathetic, empathetic, understanding. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be business all the time. At the end of the day, we can't take those awards with us. It'll just be the experiences we had. And I want to just go step back for a second to anybody today who is going through that crossroad in their life where they're just lost because we get so many calls and emails about people who just are lost. They don't know what to do when you're lost. Tap into yourself, sit with yourself, be still, sit in a chair and just allow yourself to feel your stomach, feel the blood through your veins. See if you can even hear your thoughts inside your mind, get in touch with your body And I don't say that in a foofy way. I mean that when you're lost, you have to center yourself. It all begins within your body to find, find yourself again. You know, I want you to go out there today and I want you to laugh hard. Find something and laugh hard, laugh out loud. I want you to play a song, put in a movie, cry if you need to. Because when you can express emotion, when you can get those feelings out, you know, that's, that's when you're living full out. And for people who are lost, for people who have lost their voice, for people who feel stuck and you don't have that ability, well, give us a call at Living Full Out. I'm going to give you the main number, which is 310-909-7800. And you can reach me directly at extension 101. Because the thing is, is you're not alone. This entire radio show is dedicated to helping to move you forward. Our inspirational guests like Angelica come on here to share their story, but also to inspire you to to live your life full out, to really go big. So the great thing about this show today is that I feel like for myself, I know I got a lot out of it and I was hosting it. I know that I'm going to go out there and I'm going to work out, do my Jane Fonda. I'm going to call friends. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to cry. I'm going to do a lot of things. But the main thing is when you do it, you're living. When you take action in your life, you're living. And when you take action in your life, guess what? You're leading in your life. So here's to you living your life full out today, really leading your life in a direction that brings you passion, that, that, that makes, you, makes your heart sing, that makes you feel like you're living on purpose. It is absolutely attainable. It's possible. You just have to be confident, have faith, like Angelica said, have hope, never lose hope. Next week, we'll be back with a very special guest, another one to inspire you to reach even further. She uh, overcame homelessness, and today is very successful, but wow, there were a lot of tears and heartbreak and uncertainties and feeling lost in her life. So 
Next week, we'll also be taking more callers. Again, that number, if you want to jot it down for next week, is 800-333-0001, 800-333-0001. And I want to also thank my Living Full Out family, Rich, Mindy, Crystal, Shauna, everybody who puts the show together. It's really important that you, that we give them credit because, again, the power of team, the power of that community is going to take you to where you want to go. You can lead your life in the right direction where you want to go, but it's still going to take that community. It's still going to take people supporting you, people grabbing your hand when you're asking for help. Here's to you living your life full out. I'll see you next week.